All right, Sturdy for 30 this week, we have Illini signee Luke Goody from Fort Wayne, Indiana. He is the uh, uh, the lone Illini signee this fall, and he has uh, got his Illinois basketball shirt on tonight, so he's uh, sporting uh, orange and blue. He's um, uh, Luke, you've had a, you guys are at Homestead are off to a fantastic start this season, 14 and 0, ranked in the you know tops in the state of Max Preps, I think second or third in the AP. Uh, tell me about your season so far. Uh, our season's going really well. Uh, obviously, we're fourteen and zero right now. Our team's playing really well, and um, we're I think the number two team in the state, AP number two team in the state. So um, we got a bunch of guys this year that really know their role, and then obviously the two Big Ten players. Um, so we just got a great team. Coach Johnson is obviously one of the coaches in the state of Indiana, and when you put all that together with guys that know what they're doing and guys that know their roles, and then two two scores, um, you'll have a good team. So we we're, we're started the season off really well. Looks like individually you are off to, you know, you're playing really well. I was looking at your stats, 20 points a game, nine boards a game, shooting 41% from three, um, leading the team in rebounding, uh, assists, uh, doing a little bit of everything. So uh, uh, tell me about how you feel like you're playing this year. Uh, this season, like personally, I feel like, uh, personally this season, I feel like I've stepped up a little bit in all uh, facets of my game. That was kind of a big focus for me. Um, and the off season was to get bigger and stronger um, because in the Big Ten, they got bigger guys. So one of the biggest focuses for me um, was to get bigger and be able to rebound more and be be more effective in all um, different variables in my game. So being able to score and then also lead the team in assists and rebounds is something that I really worked hard to do. Um, every time I talk to Coach Underwood, he always tells me to – or he always asks me how the rebounds are and how I'm rebounding and stuff like that. So um, just being able to do it, do what I do, um, and just help out the team any way I do. When you talk to the Illinois coaches, what do they kind of focus on with you? Like, what do they want you to work on this season and, and, and get better at going into next year? Um, the Illinois coaches keep, yeah, they just keep preaching to me to continue to uh, become a better, become a better. Sorry about that. Become a better on-ball defender. Um, they really need me to come in and be able to guard those perimeter guys, those wing guys, and also the guards. So play my defense and just continuing to get bigger and stronger and consistency on all levels. Um, obviously, I'm coming in there to be a shooter, to be a guy that can stretch the floor and knock down shots for them. So they just want me to continue with my consistency and just continuing to get better in all different facets of my game. As far as positioning, and I know that, you know, Brad talks a lot about um, playing positionless basketball to a certain extent, mm -hmm. but, but um, as far as your, your role, I mean, do, do you see yourself maybe playing anywhere from the, the two to the four, um, depending on matchups and how things shake out? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I mean, I would go and do whatever the team needs me to do. I feel like with my length and uh, my ability growing up playing as a guard, but then also being able to get to the six, 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 seven that I am, it definitely gives me a lot of different options um, where coaches can put me at. This year, I, I mean, last year for high school basketball, our point guard was out, so I played point guard the whole year. And then this year, we got point guard. Uh, Fletcher Lawyer plays a lot of point guard, so I'm able to kind of come off the ball more and be more of that two, three, and I mean, even play the four in some of our lineups. So just being able to do that. Um, is kind of helpful for my game. And then, like you said, I mean, anything that coaches need me to do at Illinois, I can feel like I can go out of two, and I also feel like I can go out and play the four. So being able to be multidimensional is definitely something that I pride myself on. How is the – as you look at yourself, I mean, you say you're six, you're about 6'7 now, roughly, or close, somewhere between 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, do, do you have a goal for, like, weight-wise? Do you say, I'm going to put on 10 pounds, 15 pounds before I get to campus? And obviously, in season, it's really hard to put on weight, I'm sure, right now. But when you get in this off season and you've got a few months before you, you know, come to Illinois in June, what, what is your goal as far as, you know, putting on weight? That's actually something I worked on uh, right after I signed with Coach Fletcher. Um, and Coach Gentry, they kind of put me on a weight plan, and I was about 175, 180. And like when I committed, and now I'm up to about 195, 200 in that range. And that's kind of a focus for them. Um, they are actually talk closely to my trainer here in Fort Wayne. So um, the programs that they put me on are really in line with what they're doing at Illinois. I'm still lifting hard in season, and just like Illinois would. So that's one of the biggest uh, focuses for me from Coach Gentry and Coach Fletcher is definitely keeping my body weight up. Um, my goal is to go into Illinois about 200 pounds, 195 to 200, and 
Um, hopefully they'll put about 10, 15 pounds of muscle on me. So I'm playing the season about 210, 215, something like that. So I don't know the exact numbers. That's actually a good question. I'm not 100% sure about, but um, I'd assume probably I just based on what they have been having me do and kind of uh, how they envision me playing there. Now, of course, you committed last spring in the middle of this uh, this pandemic, right? And, and obviously, it was, it was hard for everybody. You guys have, I guess in Indiana, you probably get a little better. At least you're getting to have a season right now. In Illinois, you've got some high schools that don't get to play. So as you went through this pandemic, what, what kept you kind of focused and going um, to, to kind of battle through? Because I'm sure it was tough mentally. I know you played some travel basketball, too, but it's, it's probably been, a, it's been hard on you, even though you're getting to play a season. Yeah, I was actually fortunate um, throughout the whole quarantine when coronavirus was really, really bad and just starting um, that little four month period or however long it was, I was fortunate to be able to get into a bunch of gyms. We know a lot of people around Indiana with gyms inside their house. So I was fortunate enough to be in there and I was working out almost every single day um, just with people that I know. There's trainers around the area that were able to kind of come and work me out and just make time. So I've actually almost every single day during quarantine, I was in the gym doing stuff, either lifting or working out. So um, coronavirus didn't inf- affect me like it did for a lot of people. I know a lot of people in the bigger cities and um, other states were affected a lot worse. I know I don't even think Illinois is having basketball this, this year. So, right. um, I mean, living in Indiana, it's such a big basketball state that it's kind of one of the things that they pride themselves on. I mean, you can't really take take basketball out of Indiana. So being able to um, be in the gym that much during the pandemic, I think really helped my game. Honestly, I was able to kind of get better why some kids didn't have that opportunity. And that's def- definitely something I took advantage of. Yeah. If, if they got rid of basketball in Indiana, I don't know that they keep being a state. They might just cancel the state. They might just say, Hey, we're done. Yeah. Right. You know, we're, we're over, we're out. Yeah, uh, exactly. It would be tough if they had now, as you kind of, you know, with the, with this stuff that we we've dealt with, you, you, you committed last spring and it's been, you know, near, we're approaching, you know, nine, 10 months since you committed. And although there've been a couple of guys commit in other classes to Illinois, but you haven't had a guy in your class join you. Are you feeling lonely a little bit or how's that, how's that working? I mean, are you working, working the recruiting angle hard trying to get somebody to come with you? Yeah, it's a weird dynamic. Um, not having anyone coming in with me, all these guys are posting on, Instagram and social media stuff about their teammates. And um, I am not fortunate enough yet to have a teammate, <laughs> but I mean, I got teammates there already. And that's something that Coach Gentry kind of said. And I trust the coaching staff 100%. I wouldn't have gone to Illinois if I didn't trust them. So just because I'm the only recruit doesn't mean anything. I'm assuming that we'll get a couple transfers in the transfer portal in the off season. That'd be my guess. Um, but I mean, it's not, it's not a big deal for me at all. I knew what I wanted in a school and I picked that school and um, there's been a couple guys that we tried to get that were really close to coming and something just fell through and I've been trying really hard to get some guys to come with me and obviously it hasn't worked out too well just for whatever reason. Um, but I mean it is what it is I'm just going to come in and do the same thing whether or not I have a guy in my class with me and I'm just excited to get there and get there and get to work. Yeah, it's a it's also a weird year because of so many with the whole super senior thing next year with kids be, they have the ability to come back it's Eldo has 13 scholarships and they've got some seniors but you know there's no guarantee it could be they could have 10 11 guys come back and then you only have a couple spots so it's it's really a weird year because of what we're going through so I I totally get that is there a is there are there any kids right now that you're like hey I'm gonna get this kid to come with me or anybody that you've you've kind of focused on uh, of late yeah uh actually that Brandon Podzimski I don't know 100% how to pronounce his last name that's a kid that I know just Brandon P works about, about. <laughs> yeah Brandon yeah exactly so he's a guy that um I know is definitely a guy that we'd love to get he's a high school or a high level scorer and definitely someone that would fit great into the system as well so reaching out to him and there's a lot of 2022s I've actually been in contact with I know that's not really um kind of my class but yeah. Um, I've been talking to Reggie Bass a lot. I've been talking to Isaac McNeely. I've actually gotten kind of a close relationship with him because we both went to that top 150 camp or top 100 camp in Texas. So being able to uh, kind of create a relationship with him and trying to recruit him to Illinois is definitely something I focus on too. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's also weird for you because in, in a lot of years when you're committed this long, you've been able to, you, you're able to go on campus and work out with the guys and have 
up open gyms, a lot of commitments or, you know, official visits, all these fun things that you're kind of missing out on there and not building, being able to build with the, the current guys. So it's kind of a virtual, you get virtual teammate, I guess, is, is the way you would look at it. But so, so obviously that's hard. Is that, have you ha- been able, you connect with the guys who are on the team pretty well right now, just through, through, uh, you know, social media, through, you know, Zoom, FaceTimes, whatever it is. Yeah, like you said, it's been so tough um, to not be able to go to campus and enjoy going to games, bringing friends to games from my high school and stuff like that. It's really tough. Um, but, I mean, I've been able to get, uh, get close with Coleman Hawkins. I really play a lot of Xbox with him and uh, <laughs> stuff like that and talk to him a good amount. So we've actually become uh, pretty good friends. I've been talking to him a lot lately. But, I mean, like you said, it's so hard. Uh, I was joking with Coach Gentry the other other day like my official visit is going to be the first day I'm on campus so just like stuff like that it's kind of crazy because I mean usually when you're committed you're on campus like you said and hanging out with the guys and playing open gyms and being able to get to enjoy the the whole process but um obviously this year I can't do that so but with all that being said I mean just to be able to say I'm committed and signed to a school like that and start creating these relationships with the coaches and the players from a distance is is fun within itself. Is there, you know, you look at the guys on the team and I I have to believe a guy like you, who's such a, you know, such a good shooter um, and and the ability to get a shot, you know, you play with a guy like Andre Curbelo has to kind of excite you a little bit, just a a point guard who really wants to pass the ball and loves finding guys open. And and you got to feel like I I, want to play with him because I'm going to get a lot of wide open shots and and it's going to be a lot of fun, and and he likes to push the tempo, and I'm sure you like to get up and down too. So, uh, Carbello has got to be a guy you'd love to play with uh, next year. That was one of the big factors, actually, in my decision was the class in front of me. Um, Coach Gentry always, when he was recruiting me, he always preached to me about how good of a point guard he is, how good their class is coming in, and. Um, watching them this year really stood out to me how how well I feel like I would fit with him in their system. Um, he's always a guy looking looking for the extra pass and looking to get guys open. So that's a shooter's dream when you got a point guard that's looking for the uh, the open shooter. So being able to go there and fit into that system when you and um, some other guys there, just being able to have a point guard like that and other options to complement your game as a shooter definitely is something that um, will work out well. Is there an Illinois season so far? Obviously, you know, the, for them, I mean, it's all relative. I mean, they're ranked in the top 20, 20 or so. But I, I think for them, they're probably, they've lost a couple of games they didn't expect to lose or, or plan to lose. And so they're, they're battling through some tough times, but I think that's normal for college seasons right now. Have, have you gotten a chance to watch them play a lot this year? Yeah, I actually watch every single game. I've watched every game this year. I've been able to, uh, see all the games. It's easier for me because it's a time change. It's a little time difference. So the games are at kind of more convenient times for me. But I mean, they're going to be completely fine. Coach Underwood's such a great coach. And just because, I mean, the Big Ten is the best conference in the country every single year, especially this year. It's the deepest I think it's ever been or something like that. I mean, you got teams that are at the bottom that are being teams at the top with Maryland getting two uh, conference, their two conference wins or top 15 teams. It just yeah. goes to show how good the Big Ten is. And I think a lot of people freak out when they see Illinois nine and five, and they're supposed to be going to the Final Four and all this stuff. But in reality, they're just playing the best teams in the country. So, um, Coach Coach Underwood will do a great job with them, and Coach uh, all the rest of the coaches there, and they're going to be just fine. So I'm excited to continue to watch them this season and continue to see them grow. Yeah, I think that it's it, people forget sometimes too. I, I think that there wasn't you know say nine and five, but they didn't get usually they'd play like thirteen or. 11 or 12 non-conference games and get those extra games and those wins under their belt and so nine and five when you're only playing a big 10 that's that's still pretty good I mean they played mostly high majors and their non-conference or even Baylor and and teams like that you know top top two team in the country so it's been it's obviously it's difficult but yet at the same time I, I think that they're gonna they'll, they'll write the ship and get it get where they need to be so as you kind of navigate through your season do you have any big games coming up that you're kind of looking forward to that you say hey this is the one I've been putting on my calendar yeah so we play Lawrence North they're the number 15 team in the country number one in the state in our class on Saturday this coming Saturday so it'll be an all eyes on us kind of game on uh on Saturday coming up I'm really excited for that one so that'll be good 
Is there a is there now? Do you know a lot of those guys? I mean, you know Indiana basketball. You guys are pretty tight with the all AAU teams. Do so you know a lot of the guys on Lawrence North? Is there kind of a is it is there a good rivalry or? Yeah, so I grew up with uh, their big guy. He's going to Butler. Simon Butler, DJ Hughes, Deontay Hughes, and I've grown up playing with him since fourth grade in AAU. And they've got a good point guard, Samara Vance. They've got a another guard that played for Indy Heat 16U this year. And like you said, I mean, Indiana high school basketball, everybody knows everybody. I'm in a group chat with a bunch of Indiana basketball players. I've grown up playing with Caleb first and Jalen Blackman, some big names. And I mean, everybody in Indiana knows each other. So uh, me and DJ have been texting a lot before this game, and we're definitely excited to play. Yeah, so now as you, you get into that game, I mean, obviously, and then you'll get into your sectionals, regionals, and things that, as you get down the road. What's what's that look like for you guys? Do you know how that shapes up for you? Yeah, so in Indiana, it's like a predetermined sectional. So everybody, like, is in the same sectionals every single year. Uh, Non-seeded, it's a random draw, and every single person gets in. So our sectional this year is not as strong as it usually will be. So um, obviously, we plan on winning that. And then our regional will actually have potentially three of the top five teams in the state. So our regionals will be very tough. We'll probably have to play Carmel, um, who's good every single year. And then we'll probably have to play Northwestern, uh, Brooks Barnheiser, Northwestern commit. He, he'll probably be in the regional as well. And then if we win that, um, most likely we'll play the Gary Westside team with Jalen Washington. He has an Illinois offer and Kamara Peterson. They've got a good squad. And then, in state, whoever comes from the southern part of the state. So um, after that sectional, it was really, really a dogfight. We got some good teams out of us. I mean, I, I will tell you this. I, I, I interview a lot of people on here, and I'm going to tell you right now, the fact that you're throwing out these names of all these guys and all these teams that you might play down the road is really impressing me. I mean, that that's impressive that you uh, – are, are you a student of the game, a guy who really – a basketball junkie? I think we can safely say that right now. Yes, I absolutely love basketball. If I'm not playing basketball, I'm watching NBA or watching college basketball, watching high school games across the state. And um, I know it's not a good thing to be on social media a lot, but I love looking on Twitter and seeing scores and catching up, keeping up with all that. So um, basketball really is consumes my life. So yeah, except for there's also Xbox games, right? I mean, that's also part of it. Is there any what What do you play in Coleman Hawkins in Xbox? Uh, we play we play Fortnite together. Fortnite, little Fortnite. That's right. our thing. Yep. Is he now? Yep. Are, are, who's better? Do you team up or do you play solo? How's that work? Yeah, yeah, we play we play together, and I would definitely say I'm a better Fortnite player than Coleman. Okay, sure. all right. So I'm gonna ask him about that. So I just want you to know that. So I'm, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask him about that coming up. So no, right, so like it. it's it's good to I think it's great that you you're get, building that relationship with him, you know, virtually because it's so so hard right now. So important hard we really we really like to get those hard hitting questions here, you know, Xbox, you know, and things like that. And so you, is there a fast uh, food go to restaurant? Yeah, I love Qdoba. That's my go to. Every is, time Qdoba. I have an option or anything like that, I always pick Qdoba. Yep. What's the what's the what's the go to recipe at Qdoba? Uh, I go with the the chicken burrito with extra queso and extra chicken. That's that's fire. That's really good. That's good. So you gotta have you gotta have that thing now. Uh, as you kind of go through this, have you already scoped out when you visited campus? You know where the Qdoba is on campus at Illinois, so you're ready to go. I do. Yes, I think that's that. If I can recall, that's actually the place that we went on my visit um, in the summer. I think it was either that or Chipotle. I can't remember 100, percent but. Those are my two go-tos, and I know I know kind of where they're at. That's good. So, so the co the key on the visit was making sure that you went to the right uh, restaurant, and that that that's why you're going to Illinois. Exactly. Can, yeah. That's good. So, and those are important things that we have to know about Luke Goody. So, is there a, anything else? Give me some other. Give me some other things about Luke Goody that people don't know. I mean, we know you're a basketball junkie. You're better than Coleman Hawkins at Xbox, uh, uh, Fortnite, you know. So what what else do we need to know about Luke Goody before he comes on campus? Oh, that's a good question. Well, not a lot of people really know this, but I love to hunt and fish. I, like, grew up in Indiana, so my dad's a big duck hunter, so I go with him every single winter. I love to duck hunt, and he actually is making contacts. He's trying to make contacts with people in Illinois when he comes up in the winter so we can go, go hunting some days and – um, I love to fish in the summertime and kind of be outside. One of my best friends is actually a professional fisherman and 
does all that stuff. So I love I love getting out on the water and going duck hunting. Those are kind of some things that I love to do that not many people know about. Well, the good thing is you can you can do that in Illinois too. So you'll be you can cross the border. It's it's okay. Well, I, you can even do that yeah. now, even with the COVID restrictions. I think you can still hunt and fish. So you're still good there. There we go. So, there we go. so you can do that. So you'll be safe. So, all right, man. Well, hey, I appreciate you coming on. I I, I um I'm really looking forward to your game Saturday, and of course, watching you guys progress throughout the season. I've been able to obviously we can't get to your games in person. Um, it's a little difficult right now, but. We, they're on YouTube, so uh, people can check you out, uh, watch those games on YouTube, and uh, you got a little following there, I think, uh, with teams checking you out on Twitter, and I, I see a lot of highlights on Max Preps, on the, your Huddle account, so um, obviously going really well. So I appreciate you coming on, and uh, look forward to the game on Saturday. If you uh, if anything exciting happens, make sure you hit me up and let me know. Yes, sir. Will do. Thank you very much. All right. Hey, man, I appreciate it. Thanks for coming on, Luke. Have a good night.